trying some dupes. I'm sure you guys will have heard by now, Copycat Beauty. I placed my own order and just got a few things to try. I thought we could do a little half-half dupes kind of video. So you can see I've already got like a lot of my face products on. I've got some eyeshadows, highlighters, lipsticks, and like liquid eyeshadow glitter top coat things, like the Stila ones. I purchased this myself, but today I freaking got contacted by them. Like they wanted to put me on their PR list and I was like, God damn it. Not because like, you know, I want to have free makeup. Because honestly, this stuff is so cheap. But because I spent freaking 55 US dollars on shipping, dubbed here. So that like killed me inside a little bit, but the things I do for you guys. So I spent $43.91 on makeup and $55.27 on shipping, US dollars. So it came to just under 100 US dollars total for the things I did get. So yeah, RIP, shipping sucks. Honestly, what the heck. So I'm just gonna dive straight in now. I completely effed up. Oh, by the way, this is the like brand. I don't know if she owns it or promotes it or what the freaking deal is. You guys know bad baby. The thing is, like, honestly, my whole life, I only just realized this, but I literally thought her name was Bad Barbie. Since when is it baby? I'm sure it was Barbie. Honestly, I'm, like, mind-blowing. I'm gonna even, like, go on her Instagram and just double-check. Literally, I even read it, like, Barbie. B-H-A-B-I-E. It's, like, my brain just thinks Barbie. I think it's because it's B-I-E, but I think it's baby. Bad baby. Anyway, you know, Dr. Phil check. So let's see how this stuff actually goes. Basically the entire concept of this brand is they are products that, you know, duplicate high-end brands. So they're basically just kind of like a dupe. No, I don't want to say like rip-off, but kind of like just copied. So this is the palette I picked up. This is the packaging. It looks like this. Go to beauty is written on the front and on the box. I'm so confused. This is the box that came in. Um, on the box it says go to beauty.com. So I don't know, you know, I ordered off this copycat beauty website. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. But anyway, it says go to beauty earth metals. And this is a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills soft glam palette, I think it's called, which I completely effed up and I freaking left at my beach house. So I'm going to have to just use other Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows and like duplicate the colors and just kind of tell you guys how the textures compare and the pigmentation and all that kind of thing. So this is the copycat beauty one. Looks really pretty. Very simple packaging, very thin just like a cardboard packaging it feels fine magnetic closure it's got a mirror not a very big one though like what are you gonna do freaking tiny <laughs> i just hold up a anastasia Beverly hills palette next to it like this is how they compare the eyeshadows look the same size i believe or maybe slightly smaller in this copycat beauty palette the anastasia Beverly hills the packaging quality feels like 10 times better but you're paying a lot more this palette from copycat beauty cost eight dollars 99 us dollars so i do have like a bunch of why do I have two modern renaissance palettes? Confused. Anyway, I have some ABH palettes here, so I'm just trying to like duplicate each color as I can. I do have an eye primer on both sides. It's the exact same primer, so let's just see how they compare. So I'm gonna start with this shade right here, which looks almost identical to Burnt Orange by Anastasia Beverly Hills out of the Modern Renaissance palette, which looks like this on my finger. I'll swatch this one. It feels like the same on my finger. That's how they look next to each other. So I'm going to go in on this side with the Copycat Beauty. When I tap my brush into it, it's quite powdery, but so can the ABH palettes, to be honest. So I'm just going to go straight in. Straight away, I notice it's kind of like sticking to a certain part of my eye. So I'm just going to go back in again and go in with more color and just try to blend it out a bit more. It's like very pigmented. Look at that. It's just like kind of hard to blend, I reckon. Like, not like the worst, but you do have to spend a little bit of time just like buffing it out because it kind of sticks. But like, look, that looks pretty good now. I'm just going to wipe off my brush on a towel. Then go in with the Modern Renaissance Burnt Orange, which is this shade right here. It's almost the exact same. See, this one's like also kind of powdery. Powderiness isn't like a make or break for me. Like, oh, see how much more pigmented that is though. You know, some eyeshadows just are a bit powdery. It's all about how they apply to me. Like, if they apply well and blend well, like, who cares? Just means you're going to go through the product a bit quicker though. So that one, I only had to dip in once and I did the entire cream. It's blending out easily. It's definitely more pigmented, but you get a very similar effect on both sides, so you know. Next time I'm going to take like a light gold, so this is the Copycat Beauty one. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. I feel like the Anastasia Beverly Hills shimmers are a lot more intense 
shimmer whereas the copycat beauty are a little bit more subtle and less pigmented but let's actually just try applying this to like my inner corner and brow bone so this is this shade right here but that still looks amazing like it's still really pretty for the brow bone i really like that color like it's a beautiful kind of beige golden shade and of course i don't have the exact dupe because i don't have my sultry palette with me i don't want to talk about it but we're going to go in with this shade called primavera um, from the Modern Renaissance palette. It's a very similar shade, so I'll just wipe off my brush. A nice light kind of gold. I'm going to apply that on this brow bone. This one's definitely just a little bit more shiny, a little bit more intense, but they both look really nice. I'm gonna do the same color on my inner corner, and then wipe off my brush and do the same on the other eye. See, so yeah, it's just like, this one's like more shiny in one coat. This one's needs to be like built up a little bit. This color as well is like a little bit more like orangey toned, but hey, we're doing the best we can here because I'm a dumbass. Okay, I'm going to try a dark color now, like this dark brown, and then I'm going to try Dystopian from the Sultry palette, this one right here. I'm going in with the copycat side first, and I think I'm just going to like pop this on the outer kind of corner. So straight away I noticed it's a little bit patchy, which like, let's be honest, that's kind of normal for such a dark color. So I just built it up twice and it looks fine. I'm also going to bring it just underneath a little and then just try to blend that out. And it blends out actually very easily for deep color. I'm just going to take my other brush I used before just to like do the edges. So now I'm just going to wipe off my brush again and do it the other shade, Dystopian. This is the first layer. It's kind of doing the same thing. So I'm just going to do a second layer, tap that on. It looks very similar. I'm just going to apply it in the same kind of way and blend out the edge. Looks the same. I think this one's just a little bit more pigmented and vibrant. So I'm just going to go in with one more layer of the copycat side just to make it a little bit more vibrant to match the other side. It's a very similar color. It's just like less intense. It does look a little bit muddy the more I add though. Like it's like Going a little wee bit patchy. That's my best shot at it. I don't usually use such a dark color on the outer corner, but hey, we're doing it. Now I'm just gonna use some kind of shimmer shade. I'm just gonna try and find like a dupe here. I think I'm gonna use this shade here from the copycat and then Rose Quartz, which is this one from the Sultry palette. Um, it's about the closest I can find right now. So I'm gonna go in with the Anastasia the Leho side first on a little eyeshadow brush and just pat that. You can see it's like immediately very shimmery and pigmented. I'm just going to go all the way in. We're actually using a liquid eyeshadow soon so it's probably going to be covered up. And then on a wiped off brush I'm going to take the Copycat Beauty. It's this shade right here. This one's definitely less shimmery like immediately you could see that it, that application like this is the second layer. It's just not as foiled at all. But then again like I am using a different palette than this claims to dupe so maybe it's a different formula. I don't know this one's more you know, shimmery rather than foil. The Anastasia Probably Hills is much more chunky, which I actually prefer. I'm gonna go in with my finger and just like pack on some more. I'm just gonna go back in with that first color we used and just kind of like warm up this look a little bit because I feel like the dark color is just taken over both sides. There's minimal fallout, like there's a little bit, but it's honestly not concerning at all. Okay, so now that the eyeshadows are done, like this eyeshadow palette's not bad. There's some pretty colors, like they perform okay. They're a little bit less, you know, less quality than the Anastasia Beverly Hills, but let's be honest, it's so cheap. It's like still workable. You can still blend them very easily and build them up. Like they're not shit at all, like by any means. You can tell that the quality is not as good, but at the price point, like it works. These colors are so pretty too. Like that one's real shiny. So yeah, I guess it's worth a shot. Like if you want to pay a jillion dollars for shipping to New Zealand, although, you know, if you live in a different place, you know, it's probably more worth it. <laughs> Would I reach for that over my authentic Anastasia Beverly Hills? Probably not still, you know, just being honest. Now I've got some of these which look just like the Glitter and Glow Metallic Liquid Eyeshadows by Stila. So I don't really know what colors these are supposed to dupe. I've got a bunch of similar shades right here, but I can't really like completely copy. So I'm gonna swatch them both in my hand and then swatch my Stila ones. So I have the shades GL, SO1 and O2. So shade one and two. This one here is shade one and that's how it looks. It looks very pigmented and very similar straight off the bat to the Stila ones. As I do it, I can feel it feels more gritty though. This is shade two. Oh, that looks like that smoky topaz or something shade I have by Stila. They feel like less creamy and more gritty. I can tell just by like putting it on my hand. So once again, I definitely have left some of these at my beach house. But this is Smoky Storm, which I reckon is similar to that bottom color. It's just a little bit less purple. I've also got bronzed bell here. Is that similar to the top one? Kind of. It's just a little bit darker. Although that's kind of... Mm, 
Is that more similar? I don't really know. Got the rose gold retro. Is this going to be similar to that top one? That's rose gold and then that's 01. Like copycat. It's kind of similar. And then we'll just do Kitten Karma which is one of the OG shades. Kitten Karma is the very bottom shade right there. Yeah, they don't really like match any perfectly. I'm going to say that much. I feel like actually that bronze one matches the shade 2 a little bit better. So I think we'll do that. So here's how they look next to each other. So it's shade 02 and then bronzed Bella by Stila. So we'll start with the Stila side. I love these. They're one of my favorite makeup products. So I literally just like paint them on wherever I want the shimmer to be. Usually I have to like kind of wipe off a little bit of product because a lot of product comes out at once. So yeah, you can just kind of do like a cut crease or you can blend them out, like do whatever you want. I'm just gonna go like all over my eyelid, leaving the um, outer corner bare. And then I might just put in a little bit on my inner corner too and underneath just to brighten my eye. And that's how it looks. It's kind of creasing a little bit. And by the way, I should mention these cost $4.99 each. So here's the next one. I feel like this brush picks up far less product at once and I've by the way no idea like I don't know how much product is in these didn't come in any kind of box um so you know you would assume there's like the same amount of product but who would know it's probably something you should look into before like buying dupes because like honestly you put your like thing in here and it feels like there's nothing like it sounds empty I can literally like scrape around the outside I don't know if you're gonna be able to see but I can like scrape around the outside and I can see the wand in there like it feels like there's not a lot of product in here. I could be completely wrong. So anyway, I'm just going to apply this straight away. It's thicker. It's not as liquidy. And I feel like it's, is it as shiny? Do you think? It is a different color, so it's kind of difficult. The applicator is like the same thing though. Like it fits the curve of my eye real nice. It's definitely a little bit of a cooler tone, but you can barely tell. Like if I didn't point it out, people probably wouldn't notice. But yeah, it just, every time I put this in, I feel like there's like no new product going on the wand. It's so weird. It's like it's used. So that's how they look next to each other. I definitely prefer the Stila um, consistency. It's just a bit like, I don't know, liquidier and not so like, stiff to apply. That's how the two eyes look next to each other. Like, let's be honest, the quality looks very similar on both sides. It's just more the application that feels different. Next up we have eyeliner. So this eyeliner here, this costs $3.99 and it says on the website that it has a similar formulation to the Maneater by Tarte. So this is this one. I really like this. So I'll go ahead and do a wing on this. I've kind of bunged up the friggin, can you see this? Like, rage. I must have like slammed the lid on funny. But anyway, I'll show you how it applies. So it's quite a flexible tip. And it's very matte and dark, which I really like. And it doesn't really bleed or anything. I find with this eyeliner, I only have to go over it once. And you know, it's pretty opaque and beautiful. I find it pretty easy to do a nice wing with this. So now I compare it to this copycat one. It's just called the eye marker. The applicator is totally different. This is like a little felt tip tiny thing. This one looks more flexible just looking at it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because I've destroyed mine a little bit. This one's fatter and shorter and you can tell by looking close like this one's actually a brush tip. You can tell like, it's a brush tip because of the friend hairs I've completely damaged. This one just looks like a felt tip. It doesn't have individual hairs. So straight away that tells me it may not be as flexible, which I really, really, really prefer flexible because I like something that can like hug my bone. I've got this like super deep outer corner socket. So like if I have a stiff eyeliner pen, I find it real hard to get a straight line because it just skips over my skin, if you know what I mean. Like skips around my bone structure. But let's give it a go. So... I'll not edit, um, I'll not, I won't edit this part so you can see how it applies. It's very pigmented. It's definitely not flexible, like I'm like struggling to, oh god. That's thicker than I would like. I mean, it's pretty black. Even though it's real pigmented though, it's not as like deep of a black is the other side. Like it's a little bit lighter, but it's only barely. Like it's not like gray, but do you know what I mean? Like it's just not as pitch black. It's nice and easy to draw like on the rest of my eye. It's just like over this area, which I completely got out of control. And it looks like it's just skipped over my skin a little bit. I definitely find it hard to do like a sharp wing. Like I've just 
ended up with these friggin' fat wings. <laughs> I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, like fix it with some concealer and pop on my mascara and falsies. Like, it's not bad, it's not a bad formula, I just don't like the applicator. Um, but it is nice and dark, it's nice and even, I didn't have to go over it too many times. I went over it twice granted, cause like you can still kinda see some of the shimmers underneath the eyeliner, which I don't really like. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a nice finish though. I like the matte finish. BRB. Okay, so I do like the eyeliner. I just don't like the applicator, but it's going to be different for everyone because some people love felt tip. Like, the more stiff felt tips, for me, like, my eye shape, it just doesn't work very well. Kind of fixed it a little bit. It's still a little bit too, like, thick, but it is what it is. It's still very black. Like, I haven't gone over it again or anything like that. I just popped on my falsies. These are the Cupid Lashes by So Beauty, by the way. And then I used um, Roller Lash Mascara as well. But I did look on the website and they do have a mascara, but... I didn't pick it up, don't know why. So next we have some lipsticks. I have a couple of different dupes here. First off we have Velvet Teddy by MAC, which you guys have all seen before. It looks like this beautiful kind of like muted cool tone pink. And then we have the shade GLIP02, and this is supposed to be a dupe. It looks like this. Looking at them, they look almost identical. I feel like this um, copycat one is maybe a tiny bit more peach. And then on the other hand we also have kind of sexy by mac which is more of like a pink formula looks like this beautiful shade kind of similar to the other two but a little bit more pink and then we have glip05 which is the dupe and it looks like that again very similar but pulling a little bit more peach once again i feel like the velvet teddy match is like a little bit closer so we're going to use the velvet teddy today so i'm going to use velvet teddy on my top lip and just See how this goes. Oh, I love the smell of MAC lipsticks. I really like the MAC formula. It's quite creamy. And then on the bottom lip, we're going to use the dupe. Straight away, this one's like a little bit less creamy. Oh my god, my lips are so dry. And already I can see the lipstick starting to like crack, like it's starting to move towards one side. So the quality is not that good, but the color is pretty spot on. I feel like the copycat one's like a little bit of a thicker formula. Like it's a little bit harder to drag on, but you can see once it's on, like, it literally does look the same. It's just, like I said, like, half a shade peachier, like, ever so slightly, but, like, there you go. So, that's nice. I like the packaging. It kind of looks like a MAC lipstick. Um, doesn't feel as sturdy. It feels a little bit more lightweight and, like, more tinny almost, like, plasticky. And the box that it came in looks like this. Like, very simple, but you get what you pay for. So, overall, I think the Copycat Beauty eyeshadows, they're just a little bit muddier almost, like, the blending, but they still look decent. The lip color is almost spot on. That's all that. So, we've got the final step. I just put on some setting spray, and now we've got highlighter. So, I bought this palette right here, which is called Beach Glow. And it's a dupe for Anastasia Beverly Hills once again. I accidentally dinged it before when I opened it. <laughs> Don't want to talk about it. So this is the Beach Glow Kit, $8.99. Same cost as the eyeshadow palette. And then the dupe, or the original, I should say. This is the Sugar Glow Kit by Anastasia Beverly Hills. So, yeah. I actually used this one in a recent video. So... That's how they look next to each other, very similar. I noticed just from looking at them, the Anastasia Beverly Hills one looks way more like foiled once again, like a lot more like shimmery and chunky almost, which could actually be a negative. Cause you guys know me, I love like a smooth highlight. I don't like anything that looks too chunky on my face cause it just doesn't look good in real life. Like it looks good on Instagram, but in real life it just accentuates everything. So I'm going to use a detailed face brush. I'm just wiping it clean. And I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. It's like the most golden kind of color. So this is the copycat beauty side on the brush it looks like this i'm just going to oh yeah that's pigmented okay i'm going to wipe off some of the product off my brush because i applied way too much it is very pigmented and it looks super smooth my contour looks so bad right now i don't know what's happening i think i've got a pimple here so it's like i don't know it looks really like muddy but it's actually like a pimple on my cheek Ugh. anyway back to this so there we go i'm just going to put a little bit up on my forehead a little bit on my nose it's very pretty. Up close, like, there you go. Shiny, smooth. Now I'm going to try Butterscotch from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I wiped off my brush and we're going to take a bit of the product and I feel like the, I did apply too much though, but the copycat side is much more intense. I feel like the Anastasia Beverly Hills is more of like a, I don't know, it's like less opaque, which is like a good thing because like this kind of looks like a stripe. Whereas on this side, it just kind of like glows on the surface, but it's honestly not that much of a difference. Like if I had to be picky, like that's what I would say, but it's the same kind of. <laughs> I always use a brush like this with these highlighters, otherwise they literally look like glitter on my skin. Just to like 
buff it in properly. I don't know. So I'm just going to swatch all four on my fingers. So this is the Copycat Beauty and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills. So the Copycat one looks more powdery but the colors are like almost identical. I feel like the pink is a little bit lighter on Copycat but yeah they're virtually the same. So there you go. That is my dupes for the day. So there you go. I actually ended up liking a lot of those products. I was very skeptical. I feel like your first reaction is to kind of like hate it because it's a rip off. Do you know what I mean? But it's just a dupe and I honestly don't think it's that bad at all. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Like I'm not a huge fan of the packaging and stuff. It doesn't feel as nice as like the high-end version but like I say you get what you pay for. It's not all about the packaging at the end of the day. It's about how the product performs and yes you do have to put in a little bit more work with pretty much all of those products I just used but like you can get the same outcome. So I'm pretty happy. I apologize that I didn't have the correct soft glam palette or whatever it was like ugh, my brain but yeah I use like the same colors and pleasantly surprised so if you guys have tried this brand comment below and let me know what you guys thought of it I wish the shipping wasn't so horrendous but that's what I get for living in like Mordor I haven't really watched anyone else's review on this brand either so I don't really know like what anyone else thinks about it. I don't know if they like it or hate it or what the deal is right now but like I honestly did not expect it to perform this well it's not the best makeup I've ever used uh but for the price like it's pretty damn good so yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to thumbs up it would really help me out and don't forget to subscribe and notify and all of those great things I really appreciate it I love you guys I appreciate your support and I hope you have an amazing day and I'll talk to you guys next time bye <laughs>